Okay. Probably the least interesting video on the entire channel. Which is impressive. But I need a study. I need an easy way for me to remember everything in biology. Now, I actually took triple science for Singapore. If you don't know what triple science is, it means you took all of physics, biology, and chemistry. Rather than Singapore's other options of chemistry and another thing. It can count as two subjects. It can count as one. Either like pure science or combined. Combined means it's only one. Pure obviously means they're separate. So it's two subjects. Which... I went triple, which is the hardest one, but honestly, I think it's fine. People keep telling me it's so difficult, and I, I disagree. I don't think it's easy, but I think it's easier than the others. Now, we're going to start studying. So, here is my foul. Now, right now, I'm on the page, a Wikipedia page about lignin. Lignin, I missed the lesson where we discussed what lignin is. So, I need to look at what it is. Lignin is a class of complex or complex organic polymers that form the key structural materials in the support tissues of most plants. I didn't remember this part. It does do that. <laughs> Particularly important in the formation of cell walls, okay? Especially in wooden bark, they tend to lead to rig rigidity and do not rot easily. Chemically, lignins are polymers made by cross-linking phenolic precursors. I don't know about that. Uh, history, I don't care about history. Structure, I don't think I care about the structure. Yeah, molecular mass, that's more of a chemistry thing. Biological biological function, I think this is what I need. Lignin fills the spaces in cell wall between cellulose, hem, hemi, hemi, hemicellulose, is that what that is? And pectin components, okay. Especially in vascular and support tissues, xylem, tractates, vessel elements. And scler sclerate, sclerate cells. I do know that, if I'm not wrong, if I remember correctly, all I remember from lignin is that when it dies, okay, when it's alive, it forms a sieve plate inside the phloem, which allows sugar to be transported. And then when it dies, it becomes, it, be it just functions as the wall of the xylem, allowing water to be transported. If I remember correctly, so, seeing the xylem trackets here and vessel elements, that should make sense. So it's a crucial part in conducting water and aqueous nutrient in plant stems. Yep. The components of plant cell walls are highly hydrophilic and thus permeable to water, whereas lignin is more hydrophobic? Cross-linking of... This is definitely not what we're learning. <laughs> uh... These are definitely not what we're learning about. This is out of this is definitely out of what we're learning. But I guess I as long as I get the general idea of lignin, I guess I should be fine. Now I'm going to go take a look at some of my notes here. So I'm going to go and start off with the first topic, which was uh I believe it's just a simple hierarchy of life. So this is the These are my teacher's personal notes here. I'm going to take a look at them right now. So here it's just telling me about all the organelles. So, molecules associate together to form the organelles of, and structural components of cells, e.g. the nucleus. Which is easy. It's the cellular level, ce the cells are the basic structure. I, we know what cells are. We know what tissues are. They're just a bunch of cells that work together. And we know that organs are all a bunch of tissues. And then the system is a bunch of organs. And the organism is a bunch of systems. That's just how it works. Hmm. I'm trying to look for a page that I really need to study. Here's a little diagram about the plant cell. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. If my face is here, you guys should be able to see this. It's going to be dummy difficult for you to see, but I guess you could try. So, uh, the main thing we're learning about, most of these things are things we've learned before. Cell, surf cell surface membrane. Learned it since I was 11. Chloroplast. Learned it since I was 11. Cell wall, learn it since I was 11. What we are learning right now is mostly the other things, like ribosomes, mitochondrion, and Golgi apparatus. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and Google those so you guys can actually see it. We're going to start off with the ribosomes. Now, if I can remember correctly, ribosomes, do they produce proteins? No, I think they 
processed proteins. Let's be, let's check. Hmm. Let's check it out here. Hmm. Encodes the sequence of amino acids in a protein that is, yeah, it, it, it basically processes it. Link amino acids together. Okay. Seems generally okay. Although there's a lot of terms that I still don't get that we're not learning for sure. Where can I find something that we're learning? <laughs> Prokaryotic ribosomes. I don't think this is going to come on the examination. I do know what prokaryotic means, but eukaryotic. I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Oh. Oh, there we go. Function. Ribosomes are minute particles consisting of RNA that associate. I don't, I don't care about the RNA stuff. An associated protein that functions to synthesize proteins. Right. That's the key term. Synthesize. There's a lot of different things regarding proteins. The uh, endoplasmic reticulum that I forgot that's one of the ones we're learning. <laughs> endoplasmic reticulum. It just wasn't on the diagram. So, endoplasmic reticulum. Is that here? Oh, it is here. Huh. A network of tubes and flattened sacs continuous to the nuclear membrane. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached, and smooth ER has no ribosomes attached. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I forgot. Ribosomes are just tiny dots that just are around the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and I think... No, I don't think they can be separated from the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. So, turns out they actually synthesize proteins. Do the endoplasmic reticulum do these things? Make proteins? Let's take a look. Do they make the proteins? Uh, just remembering the eukaryotic cells. Uh, a number of uh, uh wait, huh? The ribosomes on the rough ER special. Okay, yeah, we know, we know that, we know that. Uh, rough ER is named because of the appearance. Yeah, I know that. Are those mitochondria? I think those are just about the mitochondria. Huh. Oh my gosh, lagging. Okay, well, uh, that sucks. Uh, synthesized proteins. Proteins synthesized by the rough ER. So the rough ER is also synthesizing for it. Number of other proteins in the cell, including those destined for the nucleus and mitochondria, are targeted for synthesis for on free ribosomes, or those not attached to the ER. So free ribosomes are for the cell, and and I'm guessing ribosomes, not guessing, I believe ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum make secretory ones that are supposed to get get secreted out. Proteins secret of okay, from the Golgi apparatus are directed to lysosomes. We're not learning about lysosomes. It, we were originally supposed to, but I think it changed. So it turns out it's from the Golgi apparatus and the one with the endoplasmic reticulum is sent to the Golgi apparatus. I do remember the Golgi apparatus. That thing just reprocesses it and repackages it and then secret make puts it into secretory vesicles. You guys don't know? Vesicles are little dots. Not dots. They just... It's kind of like... How do I... Delivery man, I guess. That goes from the Golgi apparatus and delivers it to wherever it secret secretes the proteins. Proteins targeted for... Are for transport are transferred from ribosomes on the rough ER into the rough ER lumen. Okay, I haven't really mastered lumen yet. What's this? No, no, no. I don't care about that. Proximity of the rough ER, the cell nucleus gives the ER unique control over protein processing. So it just pro processes the proteins. Does it make them? Hmm. Oh. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Here's here's how it looks. Those are ribosomes. That's not smooth. Am I stupid here? I'm, I think I might be tripping. Whatever. By contrast, it's not associated with ribosomes, and its function differ. Smooth and oh, the, the synthesis of lipids. Lipids, right? Those things. That I forgot what they do, but it, I know it doesn't make them. Hmm. So, smooth makes lipids. Rough 
makes proteins. Rough one makes proteins for Golgi. And then the free ribosomes don't make it for Golgi, they make it for the, or the organelles. Now we're going to take a look at the mitochondrion. We focus on this one a lot, and it's honestly not that difficult. It's just, all it does is perform aerobic respiration. Oh, we actually get a little diagram here. Oh, there's ribosomes in it? Yeah, we definitely, we haven't learned what's in the thing. We only know, oh, this is a mitochondria. Or mitochondrion. Or small lot of between, okay. I got a nails mini my mini compartment. We carry out. Okay, I don't. I don't really care about what they do. I care about what the entire mitochondria do. What does mitochondria do? That's what I care about. Although the best known role for mitochondria is energy production, aerobic respiration, same thing. They carry out other important tasks as well. Only about three percent of the genes are need needed to make a mitochondria go into its energy production equipment. The vast majority are involved in other jobs, huh? ATP, a complex organic chemical, don't care about that. Hmm. Energy production. Ox o oxidative phosphorylation. Is that just aerobic respiration but nonsensical sounding? <laughs> okay, well, I, I just need to know. Aerobic respiration. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And I also need to remember how it looks, but honestly, they're all, all of the organs are pretty distinguishable. Like, look at the Golgi apparatus. Or as we call it, for some reason, sometimes we refer to it as the Golgi body. Here's how it looks. This is very distinct. This is nearly unforgettable. This is most most of the class's favorite organ. Most of the class love this organ. We all we all love this one. It's just funny. It's just hilarious. Like, look at it. It's funny. So what are we gonna look at next? So we got the new organelles done. We got the old organelles. Just pretty simple. Hmm. Okay, I need to remember some of those definition questions that people don't like. What is an organelle? An organelle is a special structure within a cell. It's not going to be easy to remember. Yeah, I, I definitely need to remember that. A special structure. Why are there so many types of different organelles in eukaryotic cells? Each organelle is specialized into serving its function just like organs. Uh, hmm. Oh, this is a complicated diagram of an animal cell. I don't care about this one. Centrioles, lysosome, microvilli. Okay, most of the things are the same. But what the hell is microvilli? Huh? Yeah, I definitely didn't learn about that. All right, here's a little thing about cell organelles that my teacher made for me. I want. I don't know if you guys can see all of it. So. Uh, we don't care about all of it. Double layer of phospholipid, phospholipids, whatever that is. I think it's a type of lipid, although protein darn it. Whatever. Partially permeable. It's basically, I think it's basically the cell membrane, which you guys should know unless you guys are really young. Mitochondrion, aerobic respiration. Oh, releasing energy. Glucose plus oxygen makes water and carbon dioxide. Gotta remember that. Golgi apparatus stores proteins and chemically modifies and repackages proteins into secretory vesicles. Although, wait, no, that was my original answer. The correction is chemically modifies from smooth and rough endoplasm reticulum. Okay. Repackages substances into secretory vesicles. And the substances are proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Okay, carbohydrates. The ripe, the, uh, Oh no, this is the endoplasmic reticulum. Yeah, it creates lipids and steroids. Ste steroids, okay. Okay, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Synthesizes carbohydrates and fats lipids. And detoxifies poisonous substances. Oh, it detoxifies things. I, didn't, I forgot about that. Synthesizes secretory proteins for the rough one. Yep, easy. Ribosomes. Those are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Or just floating around the cytoplasm. Which we all know what that is, hopefully. Uh, nucleus stores DNA, controls cell activity. This is basic stuff. Centrioles, don't care. Chloroplasts. It's very simple. 
cellular cell wall. We need to refer to it as cellulose, but I don't think I'll forget that one. Because a girl just randomly emphasized it like mad to me. I don't know why. What else is there here? Ah, specialized cells. Okay, root hair cell. Absorb water and dissolve mineral ions from soil. Yeah. I don't even remember that they have a... Plant cells have an enormous central vacuole. You know, just that giant thing in the middle that just contains cell sap. It just contains cell sap. I don't know why it's so big. Um, hmm, what else is there? Nothing I really care about. Hemoglobin? Am I really learning about that? I guess a red blood cell contains hemoglobin mostly. I probably won't forget about the hemoglobin. Oh. When you fuse it with oxygen, it makes oxyhemoglobin. Ah. Okay. Okay. What else is here? Epithelial cell of villus wall. Uh, okay. So they just the food. What else is there here? Mitochondria carry out aerobic respiration, releasing large amounts of energy for muscle contraction. Not gonna remember that. Muscle cells contain numerous mitochondria. I probably should specify that next time. Or I should just say mitochondrion. I always forget which one is the plural. Is mitochondria the plural, singular, or plural? Let's let's look it up. Mito mitochondria. Okay, mitochondria is the plural because it's a mitochondria R. So mitochondrion is the singular, huh? And xylem vessel transport water and mineral ions. Xylem vessel is a dead lung and hollow structure. Does not have cross walls or a nucleus or cytoplasm in the lumen. The walls of the xylem vessel are deposited with lignin. Oh, what? Huh. Deposited with lignin? I really don't know anything about lignin. Individual xylem vessels are bundled together. Don't really care about that. Oh. Okay, so the, uh, the uh, whole thing about it being stored in the lumen... Wait, no, never mind. It doesn't have anything in the uh, anything. Provides less obstruction, thus reduces the resistance to allow continuous and fast transport of water with dissolved mineral ions from roots of the assembled leaves. Makes sense. Linen is a hard, rigid, impervious substance. Strengthens and supports the walls. Okay, so it's just a substance. Huh, not what I thought. Now, if I Google lumen, this is something I've always been confused about. What the heck is lumen? Lumen plants. Maybe I should look up biology. I just type biology. Lumen learning? Is that what I'm looking for? No, it is not. <laughs> Lumen plants. Maybe that'll work. Okay, well, I don't know if it's a lumen and how does it affect plant growth. Maybe that should help. Maybe that should help. Okay, what is a lumen? In pure scientific terms, the lumen... Oh my god, it's talking about that the unit lumen. That's what I kept finding. We're not looking for that. I'm looking for a lumen of central cavity. Lumen plant central cavity. Would that work? Hmm. Okay, it looks like we're getting closer to what's shown on the notes. Middle and middle, lumen, secondary cell wall. Okay. Is this the lumen? I have no clue what the lumen is. Oh. Inside of thylakoid, okay. Whatever that is. Huh. Interesting. Lumen. Huh. Oh. Ugh. Ugh, that's disgusting. Yeah, I definitely don't know what lumen is. I I think we've seen enough. I think we've seen enough. Alright, so that's the end of the uh, this note. 
that I, that should be the end of this note, I think. So what other notes do I have? So hierarchy of cells, not too bad. I can handle it. What else is there? Oh, I believe there is a Google form that my teacher wanted me to do. I think we'll do that. I think we'll go ahead and do that. I do have a little note of osmosis, but we're not, I don't think that's coming in the exam. If it is, we did learn it last year. I'm pretty sure we didn't learn about osmosis, though. I guess I can go do it later. But first, I want to do the Google form. Let me give, give me a second. I'm going to go look for it. Awesome. So, I found the Google form. So now we can actually do it. It's about osmosis, so I guess well, this will be the osmosis stuff. I wish there was a Google form not about osmosis or something like something else that were coming on the exam. I don't know if it's coming on the exam. Osmosis ha is best defined as the net movement of molecules of an area of okay, definitely water molecules, higher water potential to an area of lower water potential. I don't know why it's taking me so long to process. This is obviously correct. It, yeah, osmosis. If you guys don't know, this is what it is: water moving from a place with more water, as we call it, water potential, emphasis on this, to lower water potential. All right, left is still water, right salt solutions. So here's how this, uh, ah, we did this today, right. Or at least we didn't do this today, but she did mention something about this. The teacher, of course. I can't foul. Which side, which side has a higher water potential? The left side. <laughs> It's called distilled water. There's no salt in the solution. It has more concentrated salt solution. Now we can't say if it's more con- Oh, this thing is more concentrated. It does technically- It effectively means, oh, this thing has less water potential. Same thing. Which of the following will occur after 15 minutes? Liquid on the left will- On the right will- The liquid level on the- oh, Which one will rise? Huh. I feel like it's gotta be an osmosis thing. I think if the liquid on the right will rise, I think. Alright, 5% of salt solution has a, a lo lower concentration and higher water potential. Wait, choose all the correct answers? It only lets me choose one. Okay. Observe this image carefully before responding to question six. Okay. Okay, let's count how many molecules there are. Maybe that's the thing. Actually, I'm not sure because I see some overlapping molecules. Both sides of the membrane have these has the same concentration of salt solution, which would ex which of the following explains what would likely happen. <laughs> Remains the same due to no net movement of water molecules. I think that makes the most sense. Right? Right? There's no chance it'll rise, right? Oh, a plant cell. So what happened to the plant cell shown in the figure? What happened to the plant cell? I'm clearly missing something. Hmm. Stay what happened to the cell shown in the figure? Explain why this occurred. What happened? Huh? Are there? I am noticing black blackness in some of the cell sap. Is there other substances inside? <laughs> uh. Wait, is that what's happening? Cell sap is just water. Maybe it's the water is going out. This occurred. Uh... 
I have no idea if this is the answer. Oh, state what occupied the space labeled X? Cytoplasm? Double. It's got. It's gotta be cytoplasm, right? Yeah, it has to be. What happens? To, what? Explain what happens to the result in red blood cells becoming this. Oh. Maybe this is not about osmosis. I have no idea what it is about though. So. What happens to the result in the? Uh, what happens to result in red blood cells becoming the state shown in the micrograph? What are these? Are these like red blood cells that? Are empty? Diffusion, I guess. The diffusion of oxygen leaving the red... If you don't know what diffusion is, it's basically the osmosis, but for literally everything else. Osmosis, water. Diffusion, literally everything else. Except we don't use the word potential. We use concentrated. Oxygen leaving the red. The diffusion of oxygen. Of oxygen. Leaving the red blood cells. As a result of. Of the surroundings. Containing. We know. Having a lower. Concentra concentration of oxygen than the red blood cells. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if this is correct. We're gonna try it or watch this video. This is loud. Pretty loud. Probably doesn't really matter. Cover the mouths of two thistle funnels with two pieces of fresh swim bladder of fish. Tie the swim bladders tightly with threads. Make sure the swim bladders do not leak. Bladder? That's what that is? I thought it was gladder. Bladder? Oh. Invert the thistle funnels. Add concentrated sucrose solution into one of them carefully until the sucrose solution fills the bulb of the thistle funnel completely. Label this setup A. Add distilled water into another thistle funnel okay, until the distilled thing. water fills the bulb of the thistle funnel completely. If it's distilled water, which is pure water, it's definitely an osmosis thing. I don't know what happens though. What the hell is a swim bladder? Label this setup B. Rinse the outside of the thistle funnels and swim bladders with distilled water. Then use stands and clamps to fix the thistle funnels. Place a beaker under each of the thistle funnels. Oh, it's an actual beaker, right? Oh, it's gonna start leaking. I don't want to know why it's leaking, but I think it's gonna start leaking. Oh, fine. Add distilled water oh, into the two here. beakers until the bulbs of the thistle funnels are completely covered. Yeah, I know what's happening here. I know what's happening. This is a diffusion thing. Or oh, osmosis. Osmosis diffusion. I know what. So, I'm guessing we're just gonna see. Wait, does, does, does the water drink, rise, or remain the same? And as such, we can tell which 
Jason has greater concentration. Make sure the thistle funnels are vertically placed and do not touch the bottom of the beakers. Makes sense. You want it to be reliable? Use a marker pen to mark the initial liquid levels in the thistle funnels. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I'm assuming... Allow the setups to stand for 30 minutes. I'm assuming the water is set up A. What was this set up A? I forgot. Observe and record any changes in the liquid level in setup A. The water. Oh. Also, observe and record any changes in liquid level in setup B. What was in setup A? Oh, a sucker solution. In setup B was distilled water. Why did the one in setup B decrease? It set up a row, so that means that the sucker solution diffused out and the water didn't go in as much. Uh, the suckers in the sucker solution diff diffused out of. Set up A more than water entered it via osmosis. That's my only explanation. Maybe I'm missing something? I don't know. Oh my god, more. <laughs> How long is this? Okay, not as long. So you have osmosis at tissue level. Okay, what? Prepare nine labeled boiling tubes. Tubes A1 to A3 contain 20 cubic centimeters of distilled water. Tubes B1 to B3 contain 20 cubic centimeters of 10% sucrose solution. Tubes C1 to C3 contain 20 cubic centimeters of 20%. That's a lot of potato. Cut each strip to 5 centimeters long. Yeah, we didn't Make that sure there is no peel left on the strips. Okay. Potato. After potato. There's no peel left on the potato strips. We want it to be permeable. Blot the strips with tissue paper. Makes sense. Feel the texture of the strips and measure their mass immediately. Huh? Huh? Record the initial length and mass of the strips. Uh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. I get it. Tube. Yep, put one in each. And then just wait. Cover the mouth of the tubes with plastic food wrap. Makes sense, makes sense. And leave the tubes for one hour. Use a pair of forceps to remove the strips from the boiling tubes. Okay. And I'm assuming... Block the strips with tissue paper. Okay, block first, block first. Okay, I'm assuming what happens is that we just feel the texture of the strips and measure their length and mass immediately. Okay, Record the battery. final length and mass of the strips. It didn't get much longer though. Seems to only get Use like this formula to calculate the percentage uh, change in the average length of the strips. Math. Okay. Percentage change in the average mass of the strips. Why is necessary? To, okay, I think we can just start doing. Why is necessary to remove the potato skin? In order to ensure that the potato potato strips are partially permeable. That's just to blot the potato strip with tissue paper before weighing them. That one I'm not too sure about. Why blot the potato strips? I guess to make it so that it's dry. To make sure the potato strips are dry and free of other substances, I'm assuming. Assuming, of course. Plain. Okay, what? Record the results in a table. Okay. 
This makes sense. This makes sense. So still water is entering the sucker solution. What can I change to the massive potato strip? The. The. Oh, wait, never mind. Exit it. So the suckers. Wait, no. Wait, what? Uh. Water in the potatoes strip. Moved out of set strip. Into the sucrose solutions as they have a lower water potential than the potato strip. Strip. The more sucrose solution, the less water potential the solution contains, which is thus why. The twenty percent. What's the percent key? Ah, there it is. Sucrose solution ended up lighter. You know, ended up losing more water. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, wait. I'm correct, right? This is right, right? Okay, let's see how much we got. Bus. Here. Here's your bus. Our view score. Did we get a perfect score? Oh, I hope we did. Oh, we did! <laughs> let's go! Let's go! Perfect score! Hope you all enjoyed this video, guys. Hopefully, I do well in tomorrow's exam. I hope I do. Leave a like, everybody. Subscribe. Let me know what you want to see me do in the future. And have a good day, everybody.